Welcome back. Stasa 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And before I get started, if you like my videos, give them a big thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down is perfectly fine as well. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you enjoy knife content, you might want to think about subscribing. All right, let's get into it. This is the American Blade Works Model 1 V4. Now, that's a mouthful, but it's an awesome one. Uh, I don't take many knives in from uh, makers or anything like that unless I truly like the knife. And uh, the owner of American Blade Works reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in checking out this Model 4. And I, I, of course I said yes because I had already been wanting one of these knives. So uh, the, the owner of the company is Michael Martin. If you're not already following him on Instagram, you definitely want to, especially if you're interested in this knife. Uh, super nice guy. He's been super helpful in giving me any information that I've asked for and uh, was kind enough to send this knife out to me. Uh, the Model 4, this, this variation is in the brown Lynn Micarta. He has several variations of this, of this knife in the V4, version four. And uh, all the models are $184 at this point, besides the carbon fiber, I think it's a marble carbon fiber, and that was $235. Um, Michael's been doing, he's been doing knives for the last three years, and I will say it's very impressive, uh, his machining, it's, it's, it's totally, it's machine ground, machined everything. And it's all done in-house in the U.S. of A. So love supporting small small businesses, especially in my home country of the U.S. A. It's a, it's a pride of ownership, and uh, one that I love to bring to y'all. Uh, comes in this sweet uh, embroidered uh, zipper padded case with the uh, like micro fleece in there. Very nice touch. Um, you can get, you can get it in, uh, several linen micartas, you can get it in several canvas micartas, um, you can get it in a jade G10 and, um, some cool layered G10 where the colors vary on like the contour and stuff. Uh, and like I said, you can get the carbon fiber version as well. Right now, Michael is a one-man band. He does everything by himself in his shop at his house. So you can imagine with a knife that's as good as this one that the demand has grown really high, especially, you know, when somebody like Slicey Dicey does a video on it, you know, with uh, like almost 19,000 followers. He's creating a lot of good press for this knife and for good reason. You know, it's well-deserved. And one, one thing that I loved about this is that this is a fourth iteration of the knife. Therefore, instead of making 17 different models, he perfected this knife. He's gonna get this knife perfect. And once he's gotten you know all the feedback and he's, he's, he's dialed in everything and he's on the final version, then he might go to another model. But it's awesome to see that he's perfected this model and he's done a great job. Um, he will also be coming out, it said on his site, uh, for some aluminum scale versions. That's what they originally came in, in the versions one through three. They had an aluminum scale right here that has been modified a little bit. We'll talk about that in a second. Currently, they're out of stock. And I hate doing that this type of video, but if you're interested in one of the knives, you go to a site and he's doing it by waiting list. Uh, so you go in there and they have all the models on the page and you click on the model you like and you can, you can say, add me to the waiting list. And I don't know, you know, if he'll do a certain amount of those and then kind of cut that waiting list off. I'm sure that's probably what he'll do. So if you want one of these knives and if it appeals to you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm recommending it wholeheartedly. I, I like it that much. I've used the heck out of this knife and I've enjoyed it every second of the day. Um, now, I'm, I'm gonna talk about a few things, but we'll say Michael said he wanted, you know, to get our opinions on these knives and what things that we would like to see different. And 
whenever he, you know, he gets enough feedback and enough people say, hey, why don't you change this or do this? He does it, you know, he wants to give the customers what they want to make a knife that's, you know, as affordable as he can get with a, you know, one man operation, everything, everything's hand done by him. So this is, you know, basically a, a, a full CNC custom, if you wanted to call it, you know, or a, a high scale production knife. And at $184, I think that's a pretty good deal uh, for anybody who, who's bought a Chris Reed knife or, you know, any of those type of uh, high end productions, like some of the Medfords and stuff like that. Uh, on the previous version of this, like I said, it had like uh, ribbed aluminum scales and the version three was like that. And he told me that the scales on this one, he added this little, uh, this little choil area right here, which wasn't on the other one, it just came to right there. So you can get much, much easier access to the lock bar and it's a joy to unlock. I hate whenever I have to bury my finger in there and it's super uncomfortable to, uh, to get to that lock. Also on the, um, on the V3s, it just had a uh, stainless steel lock bar that was fixed to the aluminum. On the V4s, this one has a uh, full titanium nested liner on just the lock side to keep the weight down. As you can see, that's just micarta on the top side. Let's see, well, that light's probably too bright. Let me see, come prepared, man. Let's see. See, that's, that's just solid micarta underneath on the show side. And then you can, I don't know, it's kind of dirty because I've been using it. Titanium liner. Um, he's also on the, um, the V4s. He shortened the flipper tab. He did have a pretty pronounced flipper tab, whatever you want to call it, pocket pecker, whatever. Whatever the terms are now. And he also added jimping. I will say, excellent job on this flipper tab. The way it's the way it's positioned, I don't even have to think about it. It's a light switch. Pull it, break that detent, and this sucker rockets out. Uh, I know my buddy Brian from Slicey Dicey said that uh, V3, the detent was a little bit soft. You could flip it, but he could fail it. This one, once I break the detent, it's coming out. I cannot fail this knife. I've tried it. Let's try it. See, that was the closest I've come to failing, but it did not fail and it did lock up. Um, it, this version, and I'm sure all the other ones, uh, riding on ceramic bearings with a hardened steel race washer to ride on the bearings so you're not making grooves into the micarta or the titanium uh, liner. You have a, a hardened, 416 stainless uh, Torx pivot and a decorative captured pivot on this side with the ABW logo right there. I love how he did that. So you don't have a free spinning pivot. Another excellent A plus. And all these things shows that he's listening to everybody's feedback. Um, the blade, you have a heavily blasted uh, blade of CPMS 35 VN. Uh, he does the heat treat in-house. He uh, also uh, does a, a cryo temper after, and he rock wells them, he said, to the range about 58 to 61. I'll say I've been using this knife a good bit. Broke down a ton of boxes from my attic this past week, and it, it did an excellent job. I dropped it up after it came back. I got a nice keen edge on there, and I'll probably sharpen her up uh, this next go around after I doll it up, just so I can see how it, how well it, it responds to the sharpening. Uh, as you can see, a perfectly executed sharpening notch, not too big to where you're gonna catch it on all kinds of materials whenever you're using it. Love seeing that. It's it's almost a full, full flat, but if you look right there, you kind of see that faint line right, stopped right here, so it's, it's darn near close to a full flat. I, I don't know if you call that a full flat or not, I mean, it looks like it at first appearance. Um, let's see, no no markings at all on here. Love how he kept it pretty much sterile. And I mean, all you all you have is that that uh, 
embossed S35. The S35 VN right there, very nice and clean looking. Uh, close it up. Like I said, flipper tabs done excellent. Jimping's nice. He rounded over all the corners so you don't have any sharp edges where you don't want them. Same goes with the scales. Very nicely done. Love, love these scales. Everybody knows I'm a micarta person. You got some heavy chamfering going on all the way around so you don't have any sharp edges on the corners at all. Um, blade is centered up perfectly. Uh, on this this side you have a Torx T15. Very nice. Love seeing that. And look how crisp. You know, you can tell those are made in-house. Very crisp Torx right there. They've all been blasted to match the blade. Um, you got Torx T8 back here. Once again, love seeing the bigger hardware. And look how crisp you can see. That is perfect right there. Um, you have a milled titanium uh, pocket clip that has been blind screwed. Love it. Added touch is screwed on the back side. Awesome touch. Uh, lots of retention on that pocket clip. You have a geared titanium backspacer that sits flush pretty much with the scales. If you push down, you can get a, a little bit of grip from them, but mainly for aesthetics. And it does wrap around here, so you cannot any shape or form uh, come in contact with that blade and the blade sits far enough down in those scales that you're not going to cut yourself in the closed position. Um, watch, watch this action. And the light switch, bam! I mean, this sucker flies out. If you push button it, whoo, it comes out even harder. Ergonomics for my hands are, are really nice. Um, I, don't, I don't really feel that pocket clip in my medium-sized hands. I, like I said, I use this a good bit. Didn't feel like I had to put gloves on at any moment. Um, and like I said, very easy access to that lock bar. Love seeing that. And it's not, over, it's not an overly strong uh, lock bar tension to have to get over. Solid lock up. It is at around 40%. I can flex it left to right but i don't have any wobble left to right um i mean you know you're working trying to get the weight down by only having one titanium liner and then my card up thick my car to scales no up and down whatsoever on my my particular uh sample it came razor sharp and it's almost it's like a it's probably a a, a thousand grit edge very nice um, it's, it's a little bit reflective in some light very nice. Uh, as you can see, he's starting to get some snail trails on that uh, blasted pocket clip as well. Um, let's get some size comparisons so you can get an idea on the size of this knife. Let me zoom in a little bit. Here is a good one, uh, the Paramilitary 2, which I'm after marking my part of scales. Um, it's, it's very close in size to the paramilitary two. And being that the paramilitary has, two has this trawl right here and this trawl right here that kind of forces you in here, you have much more, even with this flipper tab, you can see, because these two stop at about the same spot as that forward trawl without choking up, you have more handle area unless you put your finger on this side you have more handle area to deal with on this uh, model 1d4 and you got the bench made bail out in aluminum so of course if you use that that back side it's a little bit longer not by much but uh, it's not quite as skinny while I'm doing this I don't, I don't even think I don't think I even said this you have a around a three and a quarter inch blade just shy it's about seven and seven eighths inches long just shy of eight inches your grip area on this one is right around three and three quarters and uh let's see give you a thickness of the scales in the pocket right at uh average at 0 0.50 and close in the pocket it's, it, it rides really nicely in the pocket it's not wide or anything it is 1.127 so very nice 
pretty decent slimness in there and it it really hugs the, the right side of my pocket didn't really notice notice it there too much um, let's see any other size let's see I got the uh, Buck Marksman this is SK Blade Works exclusive and the Benchmade Bug Out Bug Out is a little bit shorter and the Marksman is a little bit longer alright so that's good on the uh, size comparisons unless wait, I got a pair of three as well I can show you and the pair of three is a good bit shorter there you go, that, that should give you a good idea on the size. Um, there, I've only really had two complaints with the knife and I talked to him and he said he's already working on it and I, I believe him, I guarantee you he'll, he'll have it fixed. Whether he'll, he'll make it another version or not, I wouldn't. You know, update the current version so you don't have 15 versions, but I mean, regardless, it's still an awesome knife, however, he, whatever he calls it. But uh, the first thing, I live in the south, super humid. I'm in my garage right now and it's super humid in here. Um, whenever I was carrying this to work uh, in my garage and cleaning out my attic and stuff, this heavily blasted blade <clears throat> leaving, it's, it leaves the, the, the poor, it leaves it really porous. So it's basically creating micro craters whenever that stuff's pelting the steel. And uh, whenever I took it out of my pocket, you know, the, the handle was completely drenched in sweat. And I had a lot of spotting on the blade. Now, the spotting was just superficial spotting. I was able to get, I think, all of it off. I don't think I still have any on there. And, you know, one solution to the problem, you know, not a full proof solution, as humid it is down here. But I've been spraying it with my DCI like I do all my knives I just had just forgot to do this one and I hadn't really had much of a corrosion problem but <clears throat> he I did mention that you know it would have probably if, if he wanted to keep the blasted blade for the cost effect efficiency maybe do like a polished stone wash like a nice long tumble so it'll kind of you know polish polish that down some and give you like the hinder working finish and it would, I think it would look nice. It would hide wear a lot better. Um, let's see if my lighting, because uh, I've already, you can see where I've worn it down up here on the flats. And let's see, you can see like right here in the middle where it's starting to wear down. So, I mean, it, 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 I think it looks nice like it is, but uh, you know, for me, it's a user and I, I've been enjoying it. So uh, for me, the main thing is the you know I don't want my blade, my blade to corrode, and the only other thing that I've been able to nitpick about at all is I love the aesthetic of the pocket clip. It looks great, but first there's not much room underneath that pocket clip. So if you have thicker material, it's probably going to bunch up around right here. And as you can see, the pocket clip's on a downward slope right here and it's like burying itself into the uh, micarta and literally it's it, it's kind of hard for me to even lift uh, lift this up and put it in my pocket at the at this time but he said he's already working on that you know that's that's something i'm sure he can make an easy fix he could do like um like that kaiser knife where they put the little uh ribs underneath the clip right there kind of like they do on a lock bar relief uh, I don't have anything right here, do I? No, of course, I don't have any frame locks out. But, you know, like they do on a lock relief, he can do it underneath the clip right there because that seems to help it flex some. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not an, a knife engineer or anything like that. So, but other than that, absolutely recommend this knife. Absolutely love it. I would definitely highly recommend, like I said, if you want this knife, you better get on his Instagram. I'll try to link, I'll leave a link to his Instagram if I forget. Y'all please let me know down in the comment section. But uh, I haven't been this excited about a knife in a while. So take that however you want. If, if, it, if, you, if you love the aesthetics of this knife, like I said, 
don't wait because I promise you he's not going to be able to keep the prices at $185 for long because his demand's getting getting higher and higher and higher. The, the more people get to experience this knife and enjoy it, the higher the demand's going to go, the, the price will probably have to come up. I mean, that's just, you know, he's only one person. If he hires somebody else, he's going to have to pay that person. So then that price will have to go up a little bit more. So be smart about it. If you want one, get on that wait list. Definitely, definitely worth it. I can't wait to see what he does in future runs or the next thing he comes out with because he will have a customer for life with me. All right, guys and girls, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Like I said in the beginning, if you're not already subscribed and you like knife content, hit that subscribe button, especially if you made it this far, you got to like my content. <laughs> or if you hate it, that's fine too. Give me a thumbs down. That'll work. Either way, I get an interaction from y'all. I know you either like it or hate it. All right, guys and girls, hope everybody's had an absolute wonderful day, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.